I'm excited. I feel so good to be able to say a prayer uh, for our family this morning. It's nothing like starting the morning off with a prayer to get your day going and your week going. But before I say a prayer for the family, I would like to read a, one passage uh, from Luke, the 22nd uh, chapter. 
it's so important for us to remember. We say this word all the time during communion. We do this in remembrance of him. Why do we remember? Well, we remember because he did something for us. He gave his life for us. And during these troubling times that we're going through today, it's so important for us to remember each and every day, each and every week, why we do this. It says in the 19th verse, there's a part in there that says, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. It says he gave his body for us. We have to remember that and hold on to that because if it wasn't for our Lord, we wouldn't be here today. And so remembrance of the Lord and what he did on the cross, shed his body, bled on the cross. Don't forget that. Don't forget why we do this. We do this is in order to uh, represent him. And so anytime uh, things get tough, things get difficult, as we see today things are complicated, don't lose faith because we have an advocate, our Lord, who died for us, is always with us every step of the way. Let me pray for our family. Go with me to our Father. Father, Father of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you again for giving us this moment. We thank you again for giving us this day. We thank you again for allowing us to wake up this morning. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here today. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have our health today. If it wasn't for you, there's so many things that would not have happened. And we thank you for all the things that you do. You do so many things for us that we're not even aware of. And we're so thankful for it. We can go all day thanking you for what you've done for us. We ask also, Father, that you would help us to stay focused on you and keep the faith in you. We know you have your hand on everything that's going on and there's nothing that goes on under the sun without you knowing about it. We have to remember, Lord, and help us to remember that you are in control. You are in control with all that goes on in this world. Coronavirus, to the smallest speck of bacteria, to the largest solar system. You are all in control, always been in control, and always have been. And so we have to remember that. And Lord, we ask that you would help us to remember that. Father, we ask that you would be with the church, that the church continue to uh, be a beacon and continue to grow and learn how to develop in these times. We ask that you continue to pray for the minister and his family, that he remain uh, uh, strong and faithful in these times, as well as our sisters and brothers and all the ones that are uh, 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 having issues during this time. We ask that you would help them uh, uh, in the areas that they need. If they're, if, if it's Forgiveness of sin, we ask that you forgive them of those sins. We all need forgiveness, Father, and so uh, we ask that you forgive each and every one of us, whatever we've done, knowingly and unknowingly. But we ask that you continue to keep us as a family, keep us holding on to one another, help us to keep walking through uh, this trying time, because we know trouble don't last always. Father, we ask that you be with the church, be with the uh, leaders of this world help to understand that it's you that's lacking it's caring for one another that's lacking and we ask that you will uh, do what you do and do it well father we ask that you continue to protect us from all harm and danger and whatever steps we need to take we ask that you will walk with us in our decision making no matter what the decision is no matter how big or small it is we ask you to walk with us 
and help us in those decisions until we return again. For Christ's sake, amen. Thank you, Lake Adam. Miss you. Me and my wife, Sister Gatlin, myself, we miss you, and we hope to see you soon. Take care. We love you. Until the next time. Once again, we are blessed, we are alive, we are safe, we are clothed in our right mind. We have been allowed the privilege of seeing a day that no man had ever seen before. And for this, we are truly thankful. 2020 has seemingly turned out to be one of those years that we probably would all like to forget. For many of us, the gaze towards the future, towards our future, looks uncertain. Many are wondering what is going on with this COVID, what is going to happen with COVID, and 
uh, the impending coming election has many on pins and needles. Government seems to have lost its way and the supposed grown-ups in Washington are gravely divided. But I continue to believe that uh, within God's word, if, uh, if, if we would just listen to it, if we would read it and understand God's word, I believe that within his word uh, are the answers to all of our misfortunes, all of our misgivings, all of our nervousness, uh, all of our anxiety relative to the difficult climate that we are in. One of the main things that we as people of God, I believe that we can do and be uh, doing uh, as we navigate this complicated life is to try to live to the best of our abilities a more efficient spiritual life. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. If we can try to our best uh, doing this during this difficult time to live a more efficient spiritual uh, life. Because you see, truth is, at the end of the day, at the judgment, when we meet our maker, uh, it will not be a team sport. We will each have to sing a solo. We are going to have to answer to God individually for ourselves, not what government did, but what we did, not what the president did or was doing, but what we did, not what a spouse or your children. God is going to speak directly to us and we will have to answer directly for the life that we have lived. Our scripture for this morning is Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Let me just read one verse for brevity this morning. Verse number one of Hebrews chapter 12. The Bible says in verse one, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us also lay aside every weight. I need you to I need you to underline that word weight. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us or more modern versions say which clings so closely to us and let us run with endurance or patience the race that has been set out before us. Living life efficiently. Living life efficiently. There are many uh, precepts that we could talk about uh, this morning uh, relative to being efficient in our Christianity. But specifically here in our metaphor field text. We are admonished to lay aside weights, cast off weights, or put another way to strive for efficiency, to strive for being efficient in our spiritual walk. It's interesting uh, that we are caution also to lay aside the sin. Actually, the article, the sin, is important there. It says, lay aside the sin. Everyone should be aware of their very own the sin. Are you hearing me this morning? Uh, 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 other translations here, the Greek uses um, the word uh, your peristatos. Um, and the word literally means easily beset or that which easily entangles us that 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 everyone should know that you have that sin that one that easily entangles you that one that easily besets you that one that easily trips you up it's that sin that you have a propensity or you lean towards it in other words when satan gets ready to come and touch you he knows exactly where to touch you but sin is not mainly 
what we are discussing this morning. Uh, the main word for our study this morning in this text is uh, the word weights. The Bible says, lay aside the weights. What is a weight? Weight from the Greek um, perspective of which the New Testament was written originally, the language was Greek. The Greek, um, in the Greek, we fundamentally get the idea that weight, weight is a bulk. Weight is a mass. It's a heaviness. It's something that presses down, something that holds something down. Another Bible version reads everything that presses down. Contextually, this text is talking about anything that renders an athlete less fitted for the race. Let me say that again. What the Bible means contextually here is, it's talking about anything that renders an athlete less fitted to run the race. From the perspective of being a good thing or a bad thing, a weight is actually a neutral or an unbiased term. It can reflect good or it can reflect bad. For example, a paperweight that keeps your paper from flying all over the place is a useful thing. A paperweight is a useful thing. But having to carry the weight of misery is not a good thing. That's a heavy burden to bear. So you see that the word in and of itself can be used as for good and uh, for bad. So what is important here is the context in which we find the word. From a theological perspective, a weight alone in itself can be uh, but is not necessarily a sin. Uh, a weight can be, but is not necessarily a sin. Understand this when the Bible says we are to lay off the weights or take off the weights or lay aside the weights. Attitude, for example, can be a sin. It also can be a weight. If it is a bad attitude, it is a sin. Anger can be a sin, and it also can be a weight. But if the anger is uncontrolled, it is a sin. Being late, simple enough, can be a sin. It can be a weight, but if it is being done repeatedly, being late repeatedly, habitually late, it has become a sin. Oh, shopping can be a good thing, but it can be a sin, but it can also be a weight. You see, spending uh, your offering on Amazon Prime, shopping on Amazon or in the mall, uh, spending God's money or the children's money or the mortgage payment or the food money, now shopping has become a sin. Or eating food can be a sin. It can be a weight. But eating and in excess has become a sin. Drinking alcohol can be a sin. It can be a weight. But getting drunk, now it has become a sin. So how do we distinguish the weight from the sin. In verse number one of our study this morning in the New American Standard, it translates weight as an encumbrance. It, it, it translates weight as an impediment. Uh, a more modern term would be a handicap. Uh, weight, a weight is a handicap. You see, how we handle our money can hinder us. It can be a Handicap. Oh, handling your money uh, poorly may not be a sin, but it is a hindrance. It is a handicap if we do not handle our finances properly. Um, our choice of friends can hinder us. It can be a handicap. Having a bad friend may not be a sin, but 
It is a hindrance. It is a handicap. And it is a weight that can lead to sin. Our relationship choices can hinder us. Uh, it can be a handicap to us if we have friends that are not a proper um, positive influence on us. That weight can turn into a sin, possessing uh, the wrong type of personality or attitude can be a hindrance to us. That can, that can keep us back in life. It can hold us back in our lives. You see, these are things uh, uh, that we must understand when it comes to the subject of weights and our spiritual life. There are, I need to tell you this morning, there are things that we love that can hinder us. Uh, I said there are things that we love that can also hinder us. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 10, the Bible says, the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of of money is the root of all evil. You see, the money in and of itself is not evil. Rather, it is the weight of having the wrong attitude towards money that is the evil. It's the weight of having the wrong attitude about money that is uh, what is evil. Um, and even our text goes on to say in First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, the text goes on to say that some people eager, that's the wrong attitude, that's the weight of money, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves through with many griefs. In other words, um, the money is not a sin, but the way they feel about the sin, their attitude towards all they do is think about it. They look for it. They want it. They find ways to go after it, to save it, to count it, to hold on to it. Now that has become a grief. That's a weight that you're carrying around. That's a burden that you're carrying around. And the Bible warns us again this against this type of weight. Don't miss this truth principle. Weights are capitulation with dire circumstances. Let me give you that truth again. Weights are capitulation with dire circumstances consequences. You see, the weight may not be a sin, but the sin was a weight before it became a sin. Let me say that again for you. Uh, capitulation, weights are capitulation with dire consequences. Um, the weight may not be a sin, but the sin was a weight before it became a sin. You see, the extra weight did not lose the race, but it contributed to the defeat. I said the extra weight did not lose the race, but it contributed to the defeat. The wrong friends did not make a sin, but their weight contributed to our downfall. Hanging around them contributed to our downfall. The lack of a healthy church life did not make you sin, but the weight set up a menagerie of consequences that contributed to a life of sin. It was a weight hanging around our neck that contributed to the sin. What, what we really need to know about the efficient spiritual life is this. And my final point, I'll close with this. God designs the course and he gives the victory. Let me repeat that. God designs the course and he is the one who gives the victory. Here is your truth. The purpose of every Christian is running. 
I, I want that to soak in. I want you to get that. The purpose, because if you're not focused on a purpose, you will fail. In order to be successful in anything um, in life, you must have a purpose and you must be focused on your purpose. And the purpose of every Christian is running. I said running. You may be a teacher, but that's not your purpose. You may be a nurse, a farmer, or an office worker, but that is not your purpose. Those things are what you do, but they are not your life's purpose. The purpose of all Christians is to run. That is our purpose. That what, that's what we should be thinking about every day. We ought to wake up in the morning prepared to run in this Christian life. Let me show it to you. Look at our text again. Verse number one and two. There are only uh, there, there is only one primary verb here in our text. Um, everything else modifies that verb. There, there's a, again, there's only one primary verb in our text, and everything else in the verses, verse one and two, modifies that verb. It's the verb run. The Bible tells us to run. We are to run the race, lay off the sin, take off the sin and lay off the weight. But we are to run. Uh, 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 uh. Everything else in this verse modifies that word, that verbiage to run. The, the passage says, let us run. Everything else is talking about how we run. It says to lay aside the weight. Why? Are we to lay aside the way? Watch this modification. So that we can run. It says laying aside the sin. Why are we to lay aside the sin? Here it is. So that we can run. That is the purpose of every question to run. Lay off the weight so you can run. Lay off the sin so you can run. Get rid of a bad influences in friends so you can run. Get your money under control so you can run. Read your Bible so you can run. Forgive others so you can run. Lay off the burden of carrying the heavy load of doubt and, and sin. Why? So that we can run. Notice the last phrase of verse number one in our text. It says the race that is set before us. You see, the course of a race is staked out and determined by the judge of the games. The course of a race is staked out and determined by the judge of the games. Oh, let me encourage you. Come close, come close, come close. Let me encourage you. You see, God's grace is going to cover or assure our victory. Oh, let me say that again to upset some holy rollers this morning. God's grace, his grace and his mercy is going to cover or assure our victory. I'm talking to children of God here this morning. God's grace is going to cover or assure our victory. But the author of the book of Hebrews is trying in these writings to discourage us from running a sloppy and a messy race. Oh, you need to get this. Be encouraged, but understand what I'm saying. God's mercy will ensure our victory, but the writer of Hebrews is trying to keep us from having trouble and burdens and running the race sloppy, running the race messy, running the race without receiving the full benefit of blessings, running the race but not smoothly, running the race but not drummer free, running the race but always tripping and falling down and scratching up our knees in life. Run the race, God will assure the victory, but the Hebrew writer is trying to get us to run a smooth race, a race where we are not drifting, a race where we are not sidetracked, a race where we're not being weighed down, a race where we're not running sluggish, a race 
where we're not running spiritually lazy, suffering from spiritual myopia in this race. The book of Hebrews is saying to us that if we try to run weighted down, we will not run the race efficiently. If you are running weighted down, you are not being the best spouse that you can be. If you are running weighted down, you are not being the best friend that you could possibly be. If you are running weighted down, uh, the Christianity you have on display is not, someone said, your best work. Uh, if you are running weighted down, you, you are not handling your money the best that you can. If you're running weighted down, you're not showing before the world what a child of God is supposed to look like to the best of your ability. And so this text simply says to us, let us lay aside every weight. Lay off the weights. Take off the weights. Put aside the weight. Why? So that we can run the race efficiently. So that we can run the race smoothly so that we can run the race in a way where others can look at our lives and they can see Jesus. Our lives will point them towards heaven and eventually towards glory. How's your race going this morning? How have you been running? How's your last week? How did, how did your last week go? Have, have you been running as smoothly as you wanted to? Is your marriage smooth? Is, is your work environment smooth? Uh, the way that you handle and rear your children, is that smoothly? Are your relationships running smoothly? The Hebrew writer encourages us to lay aside the weights so we can run the race that is set out before us. People of God, God's children, those that he loves and he holds dearly. My prayer for you this morning is that God will bless you and that he will bless you exceedingly well. Peace, sweet, I know.